Okay, the time is 11.52, and the date is the last day of November 2016, and you're listening to the Jesus Heart Radio. It's time now for the Christian Hearts Christian Fellowship Online Ministry with your host and preacher, myself. You know the rules about this church that when you listen and watch these videos, you are attending a church service. But since this is the Jesus Heart Radio, then you will hear these services. And when you do, you're attending a radio broadcast of a church. So basically, each one of you that hears my voice will be a member of my congregation. Well, let's go to myself, Brother Isaac David Brigman. All right, folks, we're back on the subject of thankfulness. Now, here is a continuation of what I was doing before about things. This time, there'll be some stuff from the Bible and some, and some stuff from my heart. Dumb stuff. I can't even talk straight anymore. But anyway, I wanted to get into the fact that you know how it is when there are, there are guys, I've seen it happen before, where they get to the point where they say, excuse me. What they want to do with their life. And they say it just like. They say it just like. They want to be in a ministry. They want to be in a good God fearing ministry. But then when they get that chance to be in that good God fearing ministry. They don't take that opportunity. And then they end up getting mad because they couldn't get done what they wanted to do. I say, folks, if y'all want to be in a God-fearing ministry, why is it that when you get to the point to be in one, you turn around and then you change your mind when things don't go exactly how you want it? I've seen many men be involved in a ministry that could help out the world, and they want to turn around and get away from it. Why, I don't know. They had a chance to start with to be in something that could help benefit the world. But yet, they don't want that no more because they know it's got to be work. Work involved in it, or either they have to do things they don't want to do, or either they get a little tragedy in their life and they want to bail out. Bail out? Why? I don't get it. God gave you many reasons why you are to stick with Him, and when you're preaching His Word, to keep on preaching it. But yet, y'all want to talk about how hard it is, how bad it is, how whatever. I tell you, folks, I've seen people right now doing stuff they shouldn't have done because they didn't see it the way God did. They didn't see God's talk about it. They saw their own conversation about it, and it wasn't what they wanted to hear. It wasn't what God said. Yes, it was what God said because if God didn't say it, you can't do something unless God says it anyway. But y'all want to talk about God like he don't exist. Y'all want to talk about God like he wasn't even in the picture. And I tell you, my friends and family and neighbors, what do y'all get out of talking about God like he don't exist, like he wasn't even in the picture on the day that you needed him the most when he was? And why, when you get married, do you people think that if your marriage goes down the tubes, oh, it's time to quit preaching. It's time to quit speaking God's word. I've known people to do stuff like that, say stuff like that, and be like that, because they couldn't get what God was saying to them because they thought that their life was over preaching when God tried to explain to them it wasn't. And they say, well, I ain't got all this energy to want to do it no more. Me, when I started, I could not stop. And i tell you something. We got to live in a world where we can talk to people, pray to people, teach them. I mean, people got to understand this is the reason for the season. Christmas is fixing to come up. We just went through Thanksgiving. And how can you sit there and say that there's no God, there's no Jesus, when God and Jesus pretty much is standing right in front of you telling you what to do. I'm telling you, folks, God said do this to the ends of the earth. Preach to everybody. And yet we don't understand when God says preach, we, he meant don't stop for nothing. Oh, Satan's got an idea of what he wants you to do, and it ain't what God said. God said, live your life to the fullest. Do what God says. 
How many times have you ever heard somebody tell you to do what God said and you wouldn't do it because you thought you was better than God? You thought you had a better agenda. You thought your life was better than God's. So you did what you wanted to do and you found yourself in a bad place in time, bad place in history because you didn't wise up, wake up, smart up. I don't think people like Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Joyce Myers, T.D. Jakes, I don't think they did all this stuff for nothing. They did it for God. They did it for the white man, the black man, the Mexican man, the every man, the every woman. And I'm trying to be like that myself, preaching to everybody for everything that goes on in this world. Now you tell me how in the world is it that when a little bit of strife, a little bit of toil, and tormation, or tornation, or how you say it, a little bit of toils, and torment and tarnation comes in this world. Y'all want to give up and say, time to quit. Time to give up. Time to tell the world, let's just all go down. And don't go down to the river. Go down to the lake of fire made from the devil. I thought God said that God has fire to test you in. But then yet the devil has a fire that never ends, and that if we don't listen to what God says today, we're going to wish we had of. Gets on my nerves when y'all think y'all better than me. Y'all think y'all better than me because you haven't listened to God yet. God told you to stand up and believe in what he said, not to fuss and fight over stupid things that don't make no sense. We've sat here for how many years in this world in torment and in oils, made of evilness and have not realized we need to get clean and dried off by God and Jesus, get that evil oil off of us and go with God and Jesus. Stop all this fussing and fighting about who's better than who because God knows who's better than who. God made the world. So you think he'd know better about who's better than who. But we want to sit there and argue with God. Want to say God's not real. Want to say God don't mean nothing. But when you start talking like that, you done lost the fight before he even started. You done lost it. And I tell you, my friends, family, and neighbors, ain't no need in all this fussing and fighting. Because you know good and well what's going on, but you won't listen because you're too busy telling God where he don't belong in this world. Oh, my friends and neighbors and family members, y'all done seen God's wrath upon the world before. Why do you act like it don't exist now when it does exist and it has existed for years and years and yet we still say that there's no God, there's no Jesus? How do you sit there and talk bad about the Almighty Father and the Almighty Brother when you know good and well they've sat there for years and years, sat there and told you up and down, up and down how good God is, how great God is. They Meaning they told you about themselves over and over and you sit there that like it don't mean nothing. I'm going to tell you, my friends and neighbors, y'all got to wake up, wise up, smart up, quit all this complaining about what ain't going on in this world and start learning. We had Thanksgiving. Are we thankful for what God gave us on that day? I am because I had a good day that day. And I would do it again if I could because it meant I was unity with people that I care about. And I know you probably had a good time too. If you didn't, I'm sorry for you. And I'll tell you something. Why is it people say, well, God didn't do this, God didn't do that. Well, yeah, God did do it, but you didn't want to listen to God. You didn't want to listen to Jesus. You want to listen to yourself talking about some stupid mess that don't make no sense to talk about. When you talk the foolish talk of foolish human beings, you talk the mess of the devil. Talk some smart mess. Talk some stuff that God told you to talk about. God said, spread my word. Oh, I've seen how you people are out there. Some of you people start ministries. You claim you're a part of another ministry. You're like, there'll be a ministry out there, no lie, that will actually be trying to do something good for others. And y'all come along and say that you're a part of that ministry and that you're doing a church for that ministry. And y'all turn around and say nothing but money, 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 money. God is not made of money. They said, even in these foreign countries, I'm not lying, they said there are some foreign countries right now are praying for us Americans because they think all we think of is money instead of God. 
How shameful is that to think of when we're talked to, talked about by other countries that love us. I mean, there are people in Korea who love us. There are people in the Philippines that love us. There are people in every sort of country you can think of. They love us, and yet they're scared we're going to go to hell because we worry more about money. They know how we feel about their safety. They know how we feel about their sanctity. They know this stuff. That's why they pray for us. That's why they ask God to help us because they don't want us going to hell because we are going to if we start letting money be more important than God. And that's what we're doing. We're sitting there saying that the almighty buck means more than the president of the United States, which the real president was God himself. President of the... W-O-R-L-D, not president of D.C. or whatever, because God runs everything, not one piece of the map. And you tell me, how are you going to sit there and tell me there ain't no God, there ain't no Jesus, when I know there is, because I haven't seen it. I've seen miracles. I've seen times I prayed and things came to pass from the prayers. Don't tell me there's no God, there's no Jesus. Look at Joel. That'll tell you something. Read it cover to cover. Joel tells all about a disaster that's going to happen for sinners. And you know what? Makes no sense why you people don't believe that God will do something to you in a blink of an eye. He will. And he has done it before. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. He done it to them. And you know what? I don't get you people who talk to others like they're dogs when they're trying to talk God and Jesus to you. You're the dogs of hell if you think you better than a Christian and you think you know more than a Christian knows. How can you sit there, my friends and family members, sit there, my neighbors, and talk about folks like they don't exist because they weren't speaking the language you wanted them to speak. They weren't speaking Hellenese. Oh, they were speaking the language of God. And you know what? That's a better language to speak than that language of old Satan trying to come down and tell us how stupid we are, how dumb we are, how braggadocious we are about something. Well, we braggadocious about the good Lord God and His Son Jesus because that's who you should be bragging about today. Start bringing God up instead of bringing him down every time you turn around. I'm not trying to tell you to do what I said. I'm just saying do what God said. So yeah, do what I say and do what God tells you to do. Stop all this fussing. Stop all this fighting. Stop all this here acting like you ain't got no sense because you know you do got sense. You just won't use it. I tell you folks, it's getting to a day and an age when people are starting to act like a bunch of crazy folks Try to get a point across that they didn't have to talk about. If you wake up today and you see me acting like I am, don't get mad at me. Be glad I even did want to talk about it because I care about you folks. I'm more worried about your soul than you realize. And if I can't get it right with you, I don't know what to say. But you know what? I don't want you to go to hell. And you're going to go to hell if you don't stop this stuff you're doing. And i got to stop some stuff too. I'm not exempt from all this. It means a lot to me too. i got to do stuff too, you know. And I'll tell you, it ain't fun or funny when we're sitting there talking about God and Jesus. And see, nobody cares about God and nobody cares about Jesus but the ones that know Him well. Good Christian-hearted folks. People that want to be there for others. You know... Yes, I know some of y'all have husbands, some of y'all have wives, some of y'all have boyfriends and girlfriends that aren't nowhere near you. And I feel for you. I feel for you. And I say to you, if you have those kind of things going on, excuse me, if you have those kind of things going on, I feel for you because I know what that's like. And I ain't going to say that it's easy. But like I say, if you talk to them about God and Jesus, if they stand with God and they stand with Jesus, they seem to stand a better, or they will stand a better chance at going to heaven 
than to hell. And I told you folks, don't sit there and tell me I'm wrong or I'm right if you don't know me. I know you and you know me and I want to tell you something. You are sinners if you don't think God's real. You are sinners if you think that there's no God and there's no Jesus. How many times has a man had to look you dead in the eyeballs and tell you there's a God and you shrugged him off because you knew he was right but you were too ashamed to admit to it? It's probably been a bunch of times that you've done this and there's no need in it. There was no need then and there's no need now. And you know what? I love y'all, but y'all got to quit trying to deny what we say when we're trying to help you folks. We weren't saying we're better than you. We're saying we don't know God well. But we know God more than you do because you don't talk to him. You don't take the time to get to know God. If you took the time to know God, you'd understand where we are talking about. I love you folks. I wouldn't want to see y'all go down in flames. Because I know that that's where you're going if you don't get with God. And you don't get it right. Look at John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Read Luke, read Mark, read Matthew, read Psalms, read Proverbs. Think about it. Those things tell, look at it. It tells in that line of stories about a birth of a Savior. I always said I'd like to be able to be in a world where I knew that I could one day get to see the glorious birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And you know what? If God let me see that, I probably weep the whole time I was watching it. But you know what? It'd be a good thing to see because it'd be real. I mean the real deal. God could do it. I know God can do it because God can do anything. Well, let's pray. Dear Lord God and Jesus, I pray to you that each person that hears what I'm saying understands kick the devil in the behind back to hell and hug and love on the Lord. Hug and love on God and Jesus every day. And then if you have somebody that's not near you, I pray that that person will be near you if God wants it to be. And I pray that they'll be with you for eternity. If it's your mom or your dad, then be close enough to you where you can visit them. If it's a boyfriend or girlfriend, be close enough for you to visit them. If it's somebody you want to marry, then work it out with God about that. Because I believe if it's worth you marrying them, you should. And I wish and hope and pray that all people around the world can get it straight with God and Jesus. That the homeless man is no longer homeless. The man that can't see has eyes that see the beauty of the world. People that can't hear can hear the birds chirping and hear the world talking. And I pray that each person like that will be able to go to church and learn to understand the preacher, God and Jesus, and the pastor. And I pray for my health, and I pray for the health of everybody else, and I pray for all these people that let this selection of presidents be something to turn their hearts away from things. And I wish and hope and pray for the good, the bad, and the ugly, the rich, the poor, the black, the white, the green, the purple. I pray for the yes, I pray for the no, I pray for the up, the down, the ins, the outs. I pray as I raise my hands to the sky for all things good in this world to get well and to be well. And I pray for God and Jesus. I pray to God and Jesus. I pray for and to the peace side. I pray for and to the Bible. I pray for and to the cross. I pray for and to the heavens above. I pray that all this world will see a miracle happen to it. And I pray that this Christmas will be good for everybody. I pray this in the precious name of God and Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. If you prayed this prayer... You'll see in the times to come something good for you. Thank you and God bless you.